So have a service call today for, uh, this is a gym and they were saying that all of their aircons had gone down. Now, <laughs> I didn't, coming in, I didn't know how real that was gonna be. Um, but I've actually opened up this panel here and we've noticed that, so we've got these four main breakers. You can see that middle one there. Oh, sorry, the top left there is tripped. So this could be a good one. So as you see here, we have got no power on anything, lamp test, nothing. So everything's dead. All right, so first things first, I've got my multimeter, got my little alligator clip there hooked up to earth. So I already know that we're dead, but I'm just gonna confirm because definitely don't wanna be fucking around with three phase power. So we're dead there. Now I'm gonna turn my multimeter over to ohms because basically I want to see if on any of these legs I have any direct shorts to earth. So, so that's L1. Oh, hello. Yeah, we've got a direct short on L1. All right, well, let's go L2. Okay, L2 as well. Okay. Back to okay, we've got a direct short somewhere on L1. Wow. So this here is our well, it says chassis B, but basically like a yeah. It, but this is our distribution board here for the the package units, and as you can see, nothing's tripped, so doesn't really give me a lot to go off, unfortunately. My plan of attack is going to be um, have. One lead on the earth, another lead on the L1 where I'm getting the reading and just individually go through and flick off each circuit breaker and see if that drops out the, the reading and at least that gives me something to go off. circuit breakers here. <laughs> hey, there we go. Lucky last, huh? So, all right, we're gonna pull this one out, work out exactly what that does, and we'll go from there. So I was just individually going back up and turning them on. I've hit this one back on here, and I'm getting some reading, so I'll leave that one off again. I don't know what any of these do yet. I've still got to go through and work all that out. All I'm doing is just individually going up and turning them back on just to see, you know, just do it the same way I did it just in case for whatever reason something keeps beeping at me. So I've turned this one on here as well and getting another reading. So all circuit breakers except for these two and this one are on because those three are giving me a reading. So now I'm going to work out exactly what they do. Okay, so I'm intermittently getting a reading now, still with those three off, but there we go, it's come back on now, so I'll have to look into that. Okay, so now what I'm trying to do is when it does start beeping at me, I'm quickly flicking off <laughs> the breakers to see if it stops. So I've flicked my multimeter over to ohms and then taken it off the the tone function, so I think that only works up to about 50 ohms or something like that. So I wanted to see what kind of readings I was actually getting. Um, and from what I can tell, so if I turn these three on here, or these two on here, there's a direct short. If I turn this one on, I've got a reading of 90 something ohms. All right, so we flick that off. Um, I can have, if I turn, so AC2, I'm getting a reading of 2k ohms. So I'll turn that one back off. So this, which is a uh, apparently a big ass fan, that's giving me a reading of uh, 10k ohms. This AC is giving me a reading of nothing, so that's on. This package unit, if I turn that on, is 360 ohms. This package unit, 
is 360 ohms and then pack four is 640 ohms so yeah something's going on here so this is linked up to a bms system so for, this is my first time at this site so i'm still trying to work out exactly how everything's wired up but yeah we'll see how we go so i pulled out the ir tester and just to confirm really but yeah i'm getting a lot of crazy readings so all all basically reading down to earth on all legs on all of my uh, package units, so pack four, pack six, pack five, AC one as well. Um, oh, actually, no, sorry, it wasn't AC one. I wasn't getting a reading on that. So it seems to be my package units. Um, so what we're going to do, and so DDC down there is for my uh, BMS system. Um, but we're going to go up on the roof now and individually test these package units. So just confirming on the wiring diagram here. So pack four, pack five, pack six, these are the ones I'm getting the readings on. Um, and you can see here, so it goes up here. So this is our circuit breaker here. So 40 amp, 40 amp, 63 amp. So 40, 63 and 60, uh, 40, sorry. So from there it goes all the way up to our isolators. So we're gonna go test from there and individually test these units. This is our unit here, or at least one of them. So pack 04, uh, it's an air change unit. Now, just gonna go through and test. Um, I flicked off the breaker, so that wasn't tripped when I arrived, I've done that. I'm just gonna test here um, to see if there's anything going down. And I might even just honestly just go through and flick off all of the um, main breakers for the units that I'm getting the readings on. And then uh, go back downstairs and test to see if I can Basically, I just need to get power back onto that board because I need power to the BMS system to actually see if these things, because uh, there's a couple of other ones that aren't running, that are fed from a different area because the BMS system isn't up and running. So they've got no air conditioning at all. So after some hunting, I found my other two. They're uh, in this secret doorway. The other ones are about 100 meters that way. So anyway, we're gonna have a look. I've gone through all the units that run off that circuit breaker. The only thing I can find is, you can see up there, uh, compressor overload or uh, circuit breaker is turned off there. Um, now, there's no evidence as you can see of any kind of bangs um, or marks. Now, the circuit breaker downstairs is, or the, like the main one that feeds that whole like subboard section, whatever that thing's called, um, to trip that right, that's that's massive. And you should see some form of, ev like any kind of evidence of, of an event, right? Like a bang, burn marks, anything, something tripped. But now yesterday in Melbourne was 38 degrees. <coughs> um, uh, and they would have obviously had all of these running. And I'm gonna have to make a phone call because I can't quite remember, but I have a feeling that those um, breakers are thermal. So, if it gets hot enough in that uh, in that box, which like I said, it was 38 degrees yesterday, all the aircon's running, that's absolutely, you know, potentially the max it's gonna have. Um, there's a potential that's what's caused the issue and that's what's tripped, because I can't find anything else to be the problem, right? Now, when it comes to electronics, they do some weird things and I have a feeling that those, the reason I'm getting a reading between my DDC controller and Earth and L1 uh, is because I think they're shielded. Uh, again, I'm gonna have to make a phone call about that because I'm not 100% sure. Um, I'm fairly confident that's the, that's the case though. So what I'm gonna do now is go downstairs. Uh, I'm gonna leave that one off. We'll come back and investigate that, but I'm gonna go downstairs, turn all the circuit breakers off, turn the main one on, and <laughs> hope for the best. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna turn all of these off, um, off. Off, off. Um, nope, I've just turned this on. Sorry, scrap that. Off, 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 off. Green is good, red is bad. <laughs> um, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some gloves on this one, some insulated gloves, because 250 amp breaker, I'm not gonna lie, the heart is pumping. I think this is actually the first time I've properly worn these. I know you're supposed to, but it's just like, you know, Anyone who works with electricity knows that these things are kind of a pain in the ass. Um, and usually, yeah, I mean, I'm glad I still carry them around though for doing this. Success. Um, like I said, uh, we did all the tests to confirm that when I was doing that, like 
I was 99.9% .9 sure it wasn't going to blow up in my face, but it's still, you know, a little stressful. Um, but now I'm going to go through and start turning these ones on. Just before I turn them on, I'm actually going to test just to make sure I've got all my phases and the power's correct. Cool. Three phase power is correct. Um, we're going to go through and start turning on the breakers and see how we go. So I'm turning them on individually as well, just so, I mean, I think the BMS will take a while to load up, but you know, always good just to turn it on, let one, um, cause if the aircon is gonna start up, it's obviously gonna have pretty high current draw to start off with. So if you whack them all on pretty, pretty quickly uh, in concession, you know, there's a chance it might trip again. So one at a time, let it sit for 30 seconds and go from there. 12 breakers down, three to go. So far, so good. Okay, that is all circle breakers on. They've been on for about five minutes now. Um, you can see here, some of the lights don't work and there's a couple that are turned off, but the only one that isn't working because of the BMS is pack six, which was the one that had the uh, trips compressor one overload. So we'll go up and have a look into that now. It's also just a good thing as well, just never just rock up to site and turn a circuit breaker on just do the test you can do and like i said I, I was caught out a little bit with this bms one um i've got to do a little bit of research into that but apparently it has something to do with the fact that the cables are shielded uh and earth so yeah that's something i've got to do some more research into and find out about um but you know that's why it's good having people you can call who have been doing this a bit longer than i have um it really helps out just while i was packing up uh, fault, the fault light came on for pack six. So yeah, I have a feeling it'll just be the second stage will be running, the first stage will be out on fault because of that tripped overload, we'll go investigate. So just doing a walk around, I can hear that working now. Toilet exhaust fan's working. Pack four, yep, that's working. So slowly everything coming back to life. Yeah, compressor two is running. We'll, um, we'll shut this down so we can test why that break is tripped. So isolated our unit, but just gonna test to make sure. So um, L1, L2, dead, uh, L2, uh, L1, L3, dead, and L2, L3, dead. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so basically I'm now gonna go in and test this uh, isolator here. So uh, the way this works, it just has a power feed that comes straight into our uh, overload up here, um, which then feeds our contactor and then going down and, hey, hello. Oh, there we go, okay. Well, that could have something to do with our trip. Um, oh yeah, very interesting, hey? I missed that on the first inspection, but um, yeah, interesting. All right, well, yeah, well, we're still gonna test the windings of our compressor to see if that's okay, but yeah, look at that, that has gone bang. Um, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll test our compressor to see if uh, it's okay, but at minimum, obviously that needs to be replaced. So we're gonna test our windings to earth. Uh, it's a bit hard, I'm a little, <laughs> it's a bit cramped here. There's a wall right there, so it makes it nice and fun. But so that's from um, winding one. So that's pretty good. Winding two, that's good. And winding three. All right, I'm just gonna test winding one again because that was the one with the burnt wire, but yeah, cool. Honestly, it seems like it could have just been a loose connection. So, I mean, I wasn't gonna be able to undo that anyway, but I basically kind of just pulled that and it dropped. Um, so yeah, it could be a loose connection, um, but regardless, we're gonna to need to replace that. But I'm gonna insulate, uh, IR test the compressor as well, just to really confirm. But I think looks, from the looks of it, the compressor's okay. We'll just need to come back and replace this contactor because I don't, uh, don't carry contactors in my car. Now just testing between the windings. Again, this is a, a three phase motor, so you want it to be the same. Um, let me get in a better position. So winding one, winding two, one. Winding one, winding three. Yeah, one ohm, so I'm just gonna change my little alligator clip. Oh, and then winding two, winding three. Oh, there we go, yeah, so those are fine. Yeah, look, I'm leaning towards it just being a, a loose electrical connection up there. Uh, and we'll just go down the path of replacing that contactor. But like I said, we'll, we'll IR test this as well. Alrighty, so earth to winding one. Fine, earth to winding two. And earth to winding three. 
fine. Yeah, so electrically this compressor is okay. Um, mechanically it could be seized, we don't know. We won't know until we replace that contactor and get it up and running. But look, I have a, look, I'm just gonna go down the path of saying that, yeah, loose electrical connection was the cause for this tripping and potentially that had something to do with the main breaker tripping, but coupled with the fact that it was a 38 degree day as well, um, I think those two issues combined are probably what's, what's caused this this larger issue um but yeah we'll uh we'll come back we'll get the details of this contact to come back and replace that in the meantime i'll just keep it isolated there and i'll probably even uh oh, actually that is the only place i can isolate it but yeah we'll isolate it there so they still have one stage running and we'll monitor the rest for the next little while but if nothing else goes wrong i think that'll be the end of this one